There you go. That's better. Can you hear me okay? Because I have these air thingies I can. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you're from a neck of the woods that I used to spend a lot of time at. Um, I had a bunch of good friends in, uh, they were on Union Turnpike in Metropolitan yeah. Avenue. In, uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. In well, Forest Park is right over there, right? Yeah, it was this big, it was this big apartment building. You used to go, I used to get off the train at 71st and Continental. And then, and then we would walk through Forest Hills. Right on, the, go, right on the edge there. Yeah. Yeah. Then we'd walk through a place that looked like Archie Bunker's neighborhood. And then we'd get to my friend's like crappy looking apartment building. It was the one uh -huh. apartment building. It was called the Crescent. Yeah, was, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I walked by all those buildings over. And then the last section of my time in New York City, I'm, I'm north of New York now, but the uh, was my parent, my dad, had, they were living in the village in the city forever. And then they sold that apartment and ended up the last years in uh, back in Forest Hills, which was a trip because oh. I would visit or I'd spend time there and I would go through walks and just like so little has changed you know because so much of that part of the queens is uh kind of you just it's landmarked or it's historical like it's uh you know i mean not not the old like the crappy part of it near queens boulevard and all that by the subway whatever but like you know residential and it, and that where you described was um not not next to where I, that close but yeah i mean you know reasonably close to where i grew up yeah, yeah. And I would, we'd go over there. There was Forest Park. We'd go in there and there was horseback riding in there. But we, like kids, would go in there and throw firecrackers, you know, wow. just stupid stuff. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, fond memories. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Love those guys. Yeah. It was a real quirky collection of guys. We just played vicious roller hockey games. Oh my God. Uh huh. Really edgy, lawless. I'm very glad I survived. So, uh, <laughs> you know, our parents didn't have phones. No one was calling us. Right. No one was videotaping. <laughs> yeah. But so. So did you grow up in New York? Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. Oh, okay. I'm from uh, like Brighton Beach. And uh, it's funny, my, my background's kind of, I think Woody Allen meets David Lynch. And I think we're in that. And I really do think that gets it. So, but then my parents got divorced and I moved to Bay Ridge. But very Brooklyn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so you were like on the N and R on the uh, N oh, line. And the, absolutely. Yeah. Countless hours on those trains. <laughs> I know. Because New York, it took forever to get to New York City from Bay Ridge. I was the last yeah. stop on the R. Oh, and at wow. But it was the double R. And I remember uh, John. Yeah, Tra that goes back. Yeah. John Travolta sits on that R train. I think it was the double R in that. And my first date I took my wife on was a Saturday Night Fever date. I took her to the Verrazano Bridge and I took her to some of those restaurants and we ate at White Castle and- Wow, so you took her on a Saturday Night Fever Except we tour. didn't just, yeah. That's amazing, <laughs> that's a great idea. Hopefully it didn't end, it didn't end on the bridge. No, it, uh, but, uh, it's incredibly still going. I, that's it's nice. Shocking beyond words. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, oh, yeah. so, okay, I wasn't sure. And But now you're in Chicago area, is it possible? Yeah, my wife's from Evanston. Sure. I don't know if, yeah, it's a yeah, great. I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Great little town. I really, really love Chicago. I I came here right. to do playwriting a long time ago. Then I did eleven years in L.A. And every year we'd come home from L.A. and I'd be like, why don't Why don't we live here? People are nice here. It's I just love Chicago. It gets bad rap because of we obviously have some problems, but it's a it's just such a great city. Where aren't there problems? Exactly. I mean, I know what you're getting at, but Northwestern uh, is, yeah. uh, is right there. In Evanston. That's literally two blocks yeah. from my where we are right now, where I am right now. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you have an opportunity to teach your class at that you level? Know, funny in terms of, I, of, the, of my indie nature, um, my indie bona fides, I'm, I really decided I, I don't want to teach at a university like at all, especially mm -hmm. nowadays. It's a I really do think, I mean, I'm, I'm all for all the things that everyone aspires to, but there's a, some kind of mania going on with like, you say anything that's, so I want oh, my right. own school, my own place. So I, I have a little place downtown Evanston and I, I was building up my own school studio. I don't think you need that much. I'm kind of, I think I'm overeducated to be honest. And I, mm -hmm. I really 
not remotely bragging, but I have my MFA from fancy Yale and it's, it, it was kind of horseshit to be honest. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I said that with great affection for the people who I think tried to educate me, but it- <laughs> You were I, resistant. <laughs> It, and I, it's just, I don't see it as a fun thing to be involved in that. So I, I just went out of my own school, do workshops, do private one-on-one consulting. And uh, I kind of look at my school like a dojo. I don't know mm-hmm. if you ever did martial arts in your travels, but I, I just love that vibe. Yes. Slow. Well, co- I'm a, I used to be part of Cobra Kai and uh-huh. uh, I was, a, I was a, a student of Cobra Kai. So I do know what you're getting at. Um, um, yeah. So it, it's, yeah, no, so, um, so I basically, yeah, it took some years off, but I'm, I, I'm so excited to talk to you. And it seems like you have a longer form format. You're going to have to pepper spray me to shut me up just as a warning. <laughs> it's okay. It, it won't hurt my feelings, but I've, I've got a lot to say. Well, we could do a, we could do 27 part conversation too. <laughs> That'd be great. Each, All each, of each, each part of this, the, the pyramid of, well, I shouldn't use that term. No, but that's fine. Yeah. I like I like John Wooden's pyramid. You know, the old basketball coach. I'm all for it. Um, so anything you want to talk about, I am up for it. Well, I'm I'm all, my lasting power might be in sure. it. I had my second shot yesterday. So, oh God, yeah, I know what you mean. Wow, yeah, yeah. I was down the next day. Yeah, I was actually uh, surprised. I mean, I, I my my energy is on the lower end, but. I don't have any achiness or anything like that. So I got oh. lucky. I feel like I really got yeah. lucky because uh, I was expecting, um, you know, it could be anywhere on the scale and that I might just like be feel like, you know, just I could, couldn't get out of bed. But um, I did take a nap earlier, so I had to. And then <laughs> yeah. I'm expecting that I'll probably have to do another one just because yeah. that, that's, that's the, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing. Otherwise, um, no problem. Yeah. But, oh, and yeah, and then other than that, I had no problem with, with yeah. which I'm grateful for because I should, by now I would know. Yeah. You know, it's been 26 hours. So. Yeah, that's good. Um, but here's your book. This is what we're here to kind of talk about today. Let me make sure I get, oh, everything's in reverse when you do these things. So. Yeah. So don't do this. Well, you could do this too, the spine. Yeah, but, I think you'll get the point. Yeah. Um, and wait, who, who put a, you on, who, who connected us again? I'm not sure. I have a, I have a, a, a wonderful super fan on Twitter and he did it. I, I oh. also gentleman in Sinaloa, Mexico. I hope. <laughs> and well, he, I, I thought it was somebody I knew. Oh, good. If I got lucky, I'll, I'll take it. Anyway, uh, it's neither here nor there. Uh, so how, when did you start developing this um uh, i'm getting called Uh, when did you start developing this uh your your um it's funny yeah to be honest i've been working on i think my whole life but it was about four years ago i had taken a break from writing um and i went into agricultural marketing for agricultural risk management company and i really quit writing because i was really burnt out la is it is an exhausting time to be a writer. Like it is uh, hard. It's a war every minute, every second to keep up with everything. And, and, and there's so many, such intense competition. So I needed time off. I needed to get my brain straight and my soul right. And I just needed to quit. I needed to have my identity and my self-esteem divorced from my output. Uh-huh. And, and while I was just had a regular job and I couldn't believe what it was like to get a regular paycheck, I mean, it was really stunning. And then I realized, you know, wow, I don't ever have to write again. Like I'm, I'm done. I can leave work at four o'clock and go to the bar with my buddies and don't have that nagging 24 seven vibe of needing to be the greatest artist imaginable. And I, and, and then one day, you know, I was like, yeah, actually I want to write now. And this is the corniest, most puke inducing thing I will ever say, but it's true is my little tagline myself lately is when I be, when I quit being a writer, I became a writer. And I really mm. believe that. I, mm. I, I was done with like trying to impress anyone, trying to, no agents, no managers, no producers, no nothing. Just if I'm gonna write, it's for the purity of the expression. And then I, I so I started keeping a journal of principles that uh. I wanted to live the rest of my life by. Mm-hmm. And I swear, it's so funny. Like I really believe there's some weird, quirky, funny thing in the universe where 
somehow it knows, okay, you don't really want this. So one day I, I said, you know, this is actually kind of a good book. And I, I had a friend who had a very successful book called The Personal MBA. So I, I know that he loved his agent. So I sent her on a whim, a thing saying, hey, would you check out my book? I think it's actually good. And uh, sure enough, first agent, first try, she got it, she liked it. And then it took us like seven months to sell it. And then another two more years, I mean, to like, yeah, to get the deal done. And then like another two years of savagery of editing in the best sense yeah. of the word. Right. And then it came out in September in the middle of the world coming to an end. So. Right. Yeah. But do yeah. you get during that period, or are they giving you an, do they, did you be, were you able to get some sort of advance, even though you've already. Yeah. Started? I, there was an advance. Yeah. That's good. Because, um, yeah. Cause you got to get through that whole period where you're trying to etch out your David from the marble. Right. Uh, Absolutely. So it's, it's a time consuming thing. No, there's no doubt. And then I, I got to tell you, I don't want to veer off because I get crazy when I talk about this, but a really quick tangent is the most bizarre thing is I'm a, I, I like investing, and, but I've never been, a, it's never been that big a deal. Uh -huh. I found unbelievable similarities between a great stock and a great story. There are big differences, but luckily my, I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't get an Oprah type of advance. And, but the investing really kind of came through for me. Mm -hmm. in a big way so i know people get uncomfortable talking about that but but there is a huge similarity and and that was the great gift of this book is i just can't believe how much narr you know narrative is obviously becoming a big buzzword and it's i talk about it with great like appreciation for what a cliche has become but you, do you know the book sapiens by any chance by yuval hariri i have seen it yes yeah it's a great book and he just talks about how 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 in fused narrative is into being a human being you know we right, could sure. we could make sense of reality itself without it and we couldn't organize a you know like if you you think about it like america is not a real thing you know my marriage isn't an objective real thing it's just agreements we have and stories we tell about how these things happen now they work so so the the book has really gone way beyond um just writing even though i i like to think it's very valuable for writing mm -hmm. but, uh, so you have a kind of a, a, a physic, a philosophical level to what you're trying to express here. I I think it's kind you, of evolving as we speak, to be honest, because that was not a part of what I was thinking when I wrote it. Mm -hmm. The more I watch, it sounds so big, but like like reality play out. Like um, I have a chapter called Explore All Endings where I just encourage writers as you develop your story to just think deeply about um, where your ending is going and what each, I almost think of it as three train stations and ending of a, in, in the, uh, this is classic dramatic structure, you know, beginning, middle and end, rising tension line. It's not a super experimental book. I think I, by breaking it up into 27 principles, I think there's a lot of room to do a lot of different things with it. Um, I really don't want to be too like reductive and trap writers into a creativity killing formula, but, um, thinking I've been amazed at how often I feel like I can guess outcomes correctly now. Yeah. And, and thinking in terms of narrative, whether it's friends who are on the verge of breaking up or an investment opportunity, or just somebody's telling me something. And I do, it's funny, I actually just got contacted the other day by a private equity firm who want to bring me in to teach story to their, all their like Bain Capital math guys who are not seeing the bigger picture. But narrative is just such a great way to look at things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been pretty amazing. Even, even it's had religious implications. I mean, I was utterly blown away by rereading brothers karamazov which i have a chapter on yeah and so attack your narrative maybe yeah attack your theme that one theme. Is, theme. where you know that's a that chapter is you know about um the brother who's an atheist just putting a beat down on religion of just epic proportions and it's so it's such an it's such an incredible story that even dostoevsky's you know back then novels used to be written you know serialized in like magazines and when the chapter came out bashing religion, Dostoevsky's pro-religious friends were like, what the hell are you doing? 
Yeah. Like you hit it so hard, people are going to think you're really an atheist. But for me, it only made the book's, you know, basic conclusion so much stronger that having faith is, I'm not saying that I'm not preaching religion to anyone, but I, I do find that having faith is, seems to be a, a positive thing. I come from Brooklyn Jews who thought the world is ending every minute. So, right. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nihilists. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah just at, I think the Holocaust scars of people, to say the least. Sure, of I course. It was very alive in my grandparents' minds. And the vibe was just that it's probably not going to work out, whatever it is. My dad jokes that the glass is not half full, it's two thirds full. I mean, two thirds empty. Two thirds empty. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or, right. It was, or it, it's, it's, it's only half as full as it could be, <laughs> or something along those lines. Yeah. So how long did it take you to develop this, these 27 essential? How, how long are well, we talking about? Sure. I mean, the bottom line is I actually had 150 in the beginning and they were very, very short. And each one was like half a page and Workman Publishing wanted a, a fuller exploration of each principle. So I really, really worked hard to, you know, the 80, 20 principle that 20% of the inputs make up 80% of the outputs that you know, a small number of things you do make all the difference and whatever it is. Right. And I thought, ah, that must be true. So, so, um, and 27 just seemed like a really cool number, to be honest. I'm a little bit phony there. Rock stars always die at age 27. It's a, it's a wow. wild number if you look it up. Yeah. But so I, I, I got it down at it, but it was two long, hard, 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 long years of mm -hmm. working on this, probably four, two before that, but two where we really had to dig in. And um, I mean, I watched a million movies and TV shows and read books. And to be honest, I, I finished the book in September and lately I haven't been able to like, I almost got some kind of um, aversion to narrative right now. Mm -hmm. It's funny, I'll end up being like a totally experimental guy when this is all over, which would be a funny twist in my own personal story. But I'm, I'm looking forward to getting my, I know it's going to come back, but it's all work now and things and, and everything looks like dialogue to me. And it's, it's, I'm kind of cursed, to be honest, but I, mm -hmm. I really do think it's going to just, it's just probably a natural, I mean, the stress of this for me, I mean, this was a big deal. I quit that good job I mentioned to you to do this book. And it was a lot riding on it because for once my wife was like, he's got a normal job. We've got a paycheck right. we can go on a vacation yeah. every year. And, and that um, I threw that all away to go in all in on the book. So what does she uh, think of your book? Uh, she's a big fan, I think of her hubby, but she, to be honest, uh, right now she hasn't really dug in too much yet. It's funny. I, I, we're married 28 years coming up so wow. i think we have a very happy marriage but Currently 27 yeah that, you know it's funny it, it originally was supposed to come out like the day after my 27th anniversary but um she she's not a writer and she really hasn't dug in too much and to be honest i think part of the success of our marriage is we're not too up in each other's grills about our personal stuff she's a saleswoman she's in high tech sales and she does her thing, I do mine, and then we hang out and have cocktails and at night, and it's fine. But uh, so, but I do think she she likes me. I don't know. I I I, I always say if we get divorced, I'll testify on her side. But that's a whole other. Uh, well, hopefully we won't, <laughs> we won't won't come to that. Yeah. Um, and so, how has it been since you mentioned you released this book? Came out in September, which is, uh -huh. uh, um, of course probably right in the midst of the middle of this pandemic. Oh yeah. It was an absolute, um, it was such a weird thing. And, you know, and I'm, I'm obviously, uh, like I said, I'm not Oprah, you know, getting the word out why I'm so grateful to be on your podcast is, is, is been a challenge. And, but it came out in the middle of like Trump hysteria and right. Of course, freaking out about the election and then COVID and, um, so I haven't really gotten to really get out there and, you know, whatever, glad hand and preach and right. I assume it was your intention to, to, to get hit the road, at least to some degree with the book. Absolutely. Yeah. But we did get some lucky breaks. Like, um, it's sold right away to Korea, Russia, a part of China. And I already saw the artwork for the Korean cover. So like, I do think, I do think it's resonating and I notice a, 
a big uptick in just the last few weeks of people on social media or emailing me about reading it about, um, I really do think it's resonating. So I feel great about that. Um, there's a very personal, emotional quality to it. I think Right. it's unabashedly emotional in there. And, um, right. You don't, so you try not, your approach is not to get overly clinical. You really make it, you put yourself into this. Well, it's funny. I, I'm fanatic about the, the I, I really tried to get the word I out of there as much as I could. Like I, I fancy myself right now, a journeyman writer. I mean, I've done theater, I've done TV, I've done new media, I've written lyrics, but I, um, and I, I can't stand those books where there's a big ego and you're like, who the hell are you? I don't even, no one's ever even heard of anything you've written. Mm -hmm. And so I, this was 100% about putting the writer who's reading the book first and then the, all the writers, you know, who've written masterpieces. I mean, you know, Matt, Matt Stone, Trey Parker. I mean, um, Shakespeare, you know, Tony Marks, Juno Diaz, Junpa Lahiri, um, and letting their work do the talking. And really the greatest thing about what I'm most proud of with this book is, you know, the access we have right now to be able to log on to YouTube and watch like 20 Toni Morrison interviews and watch her slowly age and sadly even pass away. It was just incredible. I mean, I had everything at my fingertips right. and, and I like to think I use that pretty well. I mean, I, I researched the living shit out of this book. If I may say, am I allowed? Oops. My, yes, leader. you are. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right. So, and you're, you're, and I mean, a story to you is a story that the, 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 the vehicle is, beside the point i mean it's uh or well it not necessarily beside the point but it can be at just about any kind of vehicle from a song to a absolutely I, I think the principles hold up i definitely think that each medium has its own thing it does best and that i do think it's really important for each writer to know where they're best suited you know like if you're a novelist you could go deep inside a character's mind in a way that's really hard in, in some other genres i mean mm -hmm. other mediums you know, so I do, but I do think the general principles seem to apply to every story I can find. And there are very few I've found that utterly break the mold. The, the one that always comes to mind for me is uh, Our Town. I don't, I don't begin to know how he constructed that thing. And I don't want to know because it's just so great. But yeah. so. That's a kind of an experimental work. Yeah, big, big time. But I think I know that Thornton Wilder, one of his big, big, uh, I'm huge on understanding your defining experiences. I think there are things to happen that happen to each one of us that are hugely heightened, emotional, life-changing events. And I'm, I'm very big on knowing what those are and knowing how they, those affected you. And I know one time he was standing in, a, in a, a disappeared, for lack of a better term, civilization, like Chichen Itza, or I forgot which one it was. I think it was in Mexico. And it just occurred to him how fragile and temporary even an entire society is. And I know that was part of his thinking when he built that script. And I feel like when people, if people, I'm a little bit defensive New Yorker. If mm -hmm. people want to come at me and say, you know, you're encouraging formula and you're, I, I think if you're so brilliant and you, have such grand, like deep themes that you need a different like architecture to build your house. God bless you. I'm all for you. I hope to God I would never say to you, well, you know, do you have your, you know, inciting incident or, you know, I call it drop the hammer, but mm -hmm. he, he needed a new, a new form, you know, and I think Beckett had a similar thing with Godot, like, mm -hmm. and, and I hope to God, if I get the next one of those in one of my workshops, I'll say, Hey, you don't need my workshop, go forth and conquer. Yeah, but there's something about a structure, learning structure um, and how you, you know, have construct stories, which gives you a place to depart from as well. Like if you, if you, that's where you're gonna go and you're gonna design something new for yourself. Absolutely. And, and I, I happen to firmly believe that, and it's funny, I've worked a lot on not being so absolutist but I, I truly believe that structure exists to force you deeper and deeper into yourself. Mm -hmm. Like 
if you execute these, these principles for me are as, as close to objective truth as, as I could find. Like, I don't think you could argue that a character um, being active and decisive, just this, and, and these are all simple. These are not like, you don't need a PhD in, in psychology and physics to, to navigate these. These are all in simple plain English. But I think like if your character is active and decisive, the character is simply going to do more interesting things. I mean, it just that you know, even um, Godot, they they those guys work as their asses off to pass the time in the most meaningful way that they can. So for me, these principles force you to dig deeper into your characters, into your themes, into who you are as a person, into what you really believe. And I do think that that that's just essential. I've I've been doing this for a really long time and lately it's been ramping up and I'm, I've yet to come anywhere near a script where the principles don't make the script better. Like it's, it's, it's a kind of a laughable argument. Mm -hmm. The hardest part I'd say is, is how much, I, I almost look at writing as like driving to the core of your being. And there seems to be something almost like electrical there that like a third rail on a train that we are terrified to get to. And it's funny, my original pitch for the title of the book was Blood on the Page. There's not a doubt on my, in my mind that had I been involved with the marketing, I'd have sold maybe three copies. My, and my mom and dad would have been two of them. But it's, it's just true that this is hard. And anyone who says it's not is, they're a liar. I'd like to say that, you know, that, that I hope that doesn't hurt my sales, but it's just the way it is. Well, um... You mentioned Thornton Wilder, and yeah. um, here is, um, you have a blurb from Tracy Letts. Yes, very so proud of that one. He, you got him a copy of the book. Yeah, what happened is I'm in Chicago now, and my I started my career as a playwright, and the woman who directed my first three plays was a classmate of mine, and it's Anna D. Shapiro, who's become a Tony Award winner. And she directed August Osage County on Broadway. Oh, okay. So I've been lucky enough to meet um, Tracy at a bunch of events and, and I like him a lot. He's a really, really authentic, great guy. And I asked him if he could read the book and he, he really did. It's funny, there's another podcast called Invest Like the Best. I'm, and, and he always asks, what's the kindest thing? And every episode ends with him asking, what's the kindest thing anyone ever did for you? Mm. And what Tracy did was funny. This guy is one of the busiest human beings on the planet. Right. I mean, he's a big time actor. He writes, he's writing every minute. He keeps the, he keeps the machine rolling. And he's, he's now got a young child and he's, so he, this was really funny. I asked him to give me a quote for the book, I, but I said to him really, and, and I swear this is the true, I, he wasn't going to just give it to me because he's met me at a couple of events. He's not like a close friend of mine, but we always liked each other. And I, I'm always after a play asking him stuff and up in his business. And it's such a cool thing to get to see someone of his level working, you know, and doing and going through the, the process of Broadway opening nights and, you know, and all this stuff. So he, I told him, Tracy, the only thing is I do need the quote really quickly because this was getting late in the game it's so embarrassing to ask for I that know, stuff of course it is. yeah i'm not a fan of doing that but but he said no i'd really like to do it i like talking he, he likes talking about stuff and he liked the idea of the book so what happened was the publishing date came and they kept telling me you got to get the if you if you're going to get tracy you got to get tracy and i was like he to be honest he's the one i wanted like the most i'm just a sure, I can understand that. and so Sure enough, the deadline came and went and he he didn't get me the quote. And it literally went to press. And again, I'm getting kind of wacky spiritual. I've never been, I'm a, I fancy myself a hardened scientific New Yorker. But I told my wife then, you know, I'm not gonna do the usual like Larry David Seinfeld type character who is that son of a bitch and how could he do that? And I really accepted that he must be busy. He must be doing a million things. Not, don't take it personally. And I called the publisher and I, I was so embarrassed. I mean, it was a night, it was really bad because it was a big deal. I mean, people were excited about him. And I right. I called my publisher and I said, I I 
I read, I read this book called Extreme Ownership by a Navy SEAL who says, you got to take responsibility for everything that happens. Like maybe I didn't make it clear enough for Tracy, although I'd sent sure. 10 right. emails. But anyway, sure enough, right after I made the, I, I gracefully accepted that I wasn't getting the quote, he sent this beautiful quote. And I really believe in my heart of hearts, like he took the time to read the book. And, and what he said about the book, I love that he said, it's not so much a how to as a here's why. And I like to think there's, there's some how to in there, but I thought that's a great way to put it. And, you know, getting a blessing from someone of his ilk is, sure. it's a big deal. Yeah, that's terrific. That's a great story. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, the name of the book is 27 Essential Principles of Story. And it's available through the, the uh, Work, Workman Press. Um, and uh, so if you're, I guess, if any kind of storyteller, if you consider yourself a, any kind of storyteller, this is essential reading. It's essential principle, so it's essential reading. I think so. Oh, and Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Also. Yeah. That was another uh, a good one. I, I went to grad mm -hmm. school with him. And you what? I went to graduate school with him. Oh, okay. And but I lost touch. I haven't seen him. And my networking skills are they if I could go back in time, I would have maybe done a better job with that. But right. he, he's such a great actor, such a titan. And I always really liked him a lot. And I again I got the book to him. This project has been by I've had a lot of bad luck, and I don't want to whine and cry just the way it is. I've had some epic amounts of heartbreak. But this book, every single thing broke my way. Like, like it's, it's, it's redefined my Jewish pessimism. He, <laughs> I happened to get the book to him through a friend. I hadn't talked to Paul in like 20 years. And I got the book to him and I get an email saying, Dan, I'm, I'm thinking of writing my first screenplay. I'm, hot, I'm, I'm up, you know, it's COVID. I'm, nothing's shooting. I'm up in my house and I'm really thinking of writing and this couldn't have come at a better time. I love this book. And I was like, Wow. Unbelievable. So I get his quote. And uh, yeah, that was a good, that was uh, a good. Well, thing. Yeah. With those two, like, um, you know, championing the book, I don't know if you need uh, to really it sort of speaks for itself. I hope so. I mean, I, you know, two, it's funny. Two uh, master, you know, like uh, of, of their, of their crafts. Yeah. I think people are skeptical nowadays to say the least. And it's funny when you see those things, but uh, in my experience, you know, I've known a decent amount of celebrities in my time and like, you know, they're not out doing favors. They, none of them are going to they be like, really, oh. yeah, they generally tend to, um, not putting their name on things. Yeah. They don't, they really, yeah. They're very, 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 uh, territorial over that and careful to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. They're saving it. You know, I, I, by the way, I'm, um, it's transactional stuff, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh, are you editing this thing as we, talk or how to ask you a question. I, I you want to go off, off uh, well, recording for, or do you want to, you, is that what you're saying? Do you want to? Uh, yeah. Well, I was just going to tell you that the gentleman who may know you, who uh, said he loves my book. Uh -huh. I, I don't hope I didn't, you know, not like for me, I just, I don't know. I only met him through Twitter. Mm -hmm. So his name is like, I think Carlos Sandoval. Oh, okay. Carlos did it. Okay. Yeah. yeah he's also follows me on Twitter and film oh, wax stuff. He's very supportive. Yeah, very enthusiastic guy. I just yeah, no, I, I really appreciate his uh, because there aren't too many. Yeah, I I, I kind of uh, put things out there in the universe, but I'm not the you know the greatest about building my following. I I kind of just let it go organically and wow. figure you do good work, people will find it. But I could be completely wrong about that. No, I think that's really I think that is true. I I like the work of Seth Godin. Do you know he's a he writes books about advertising and one of his big things is he, he almost he's a big advertising guy and his, he's saying stop wasting all this money on advertising and just put all that energy and effort into making great stuff i mean look at tesla it's like a trillion dollar company with no ads right it's like ne there's never an ad for tesla it's just yeah, yeah. great cars you know bill murray doesn't have an agent or a manager oh wow one could sort of argue that's an extension of what we're talking about 
Right. Absolutely. You know? And he does yeah. mostly pretty, pretty amazing work most of the time. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I put all my effort into this book. I didn't, I, I called one agent. Boom. You know, well, let's not get it. you don't want to, you don't want to like uh, suggest that that's typical. Cause yeah. that's, I, it's very, I, that's, I, that's yeah. a, I do, I do literary publicity too. And it's, oh, that's, that's right. that is the big problem with a lot of uh, authors, you know, very talented, getting them the agent. Cause you know, there's no way to really get a publishing deal without an agent. There's just, you know, it's in a major, it's a major issue. Yeah. So getting an agent is a lot, is a huge thing for any author. Yeah. I, I definitely I think one is another, that. but uh, I don't know how that works. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad, I'm glad. Thank you, Carlos. I'm sure he's going to watch. So there you got your moment on film wax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm glad for the book because I've written a few things myself. So I'm kind of curious now to go back and start. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been hearing, it's funny. My veteran writer friends have been crazy supportive. Uh, uh -huh. They, and a lot of them are like, were pretty hostile in, in all honesty. Really? Well, look, I, 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 I didn't have a book. No one taught me and I, I didn't go to grad school and I just wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I'm like, well, look, God bless you. You're, you're amazing. I right. have taught writing. I can't, what am I going to do? Just say, oh, hey, what can you do? Go write. I mean, it's ridiculous to me. So, but I have had a lot of my veteran writers have called me and said, you know, Ruben, I, I get caught up in the heat of battle and the pressure of the job and having this thing on my desk to just crack it open. Like one guy claimed that he, he had a real boring middle of his script and just put some, you just put some things in the right place and it just works. You know, it's not ideal to, as a, as a story lover, it, I, you want to get lost in the, in the stories, obviously, and no sure. one should be at the structure, but these things just really do seem to work. They, they just do. And, and they seem to have limitless possibilities. You know, one of the things I talk about in the book is how when Coppola was building The Godfather, he literally started with the thought of, he talks about this on, I think it's Charlie Rose interview, where he says, I, I was just looking at the story of a good man who becomes a bad man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, mm -hmm. and getting, and again, that's why I think of martial arts, martial arts keeps it incredibly simple. And then you, grow and once you get that you build a base you get progressively more complicated and you could take it as far you know i think the godfather is a pretty deep vital awesome movie and i think hamlet does similar things and uh so so that's what i see with my rookie writers especially is this need to feel a sense of progress a, fen a sense of momentum building and once you have that conviction that you can finish something. One book that influenced me a lot was, you ever hear of a book, there's a book called Flow. The guy has a really long name. I, I've learned how to pronounce it now. It's, his name is like Maheli, Czech, Mahe, Czech Sent Maheli. I'm bungling it, but it's got like a billion letters in it. But he's a University of Chicago psychologist who studied that, that state of being where, you know, one hour, whatever, how hours pass in minutes. And one right. of the things, and, and I do think this is a really, I'm glad this came up, is to get into that zone, you have to know what you're trying to accomplish, and you have to have a sense of when you're doing it well. And if you don't have those two ingredients, you really can't get into a flow state. Like if, if you're doing something for the boss or for anything, and you're, you, if you're making a painting and you don't really know if you like what you're doing, it's never going to happen. And so I think what's so cool about this book and about studying structure is, you know, the first chapter, I'll just keep it real simple, it's called Drop the Hammer. And basically, I think all you have to do to really get off to the races with a story is show us a character, establish a, a, a vibe for how their life is going. It's really either good and different or terrible. And then do something that utterly and completely changes that. Now there's, that gives you some structure to work with and some problems to solve to get rid of writer's block. Okay, now you got a job to do, do that first. And again, I'm not saying it's the only way in, but if you work on that, there's a trillion ways, literally an infinite number of possibilities for how you could do that. You know, who is this character? Where are they? What genre is this? What medium is it? What like, 
So, so that's the, that's my biggest argument for the book is that I think it not only forces you to dig deeper into who you are, it helps you get into that flow state, which is everything. And then hopefully you're in this heightened state, you know, and the gods are with you. Right. 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 A natural momentum, go out and walk, walk along the, just go out and walk and just let it ruminate and ruminate. Keep working. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. 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 Somebody said, um, I'm trying to remember who said, I heard this recently that uh, writer's block is just fear. It's just fear. I don't know. I, I agree with that a, a lot, but I, I would throw in that it's fear. There's definitely a big thing. I, if I get to write another book, which I hope I do, I'd, I'd originally there was three parts of my book. One was, it was like, discover who you are, master the craft, learn how to execute. And I wanted to talk about mindset and the, the impossible grind of being a writer, not impossible, the, the difficult grind of being a writer in the modern world. I find I have a daughter who just wrote and directed her first film, a short film. And uh, so I think a lot about, you know, I'm like, Sally, you know, you have three kids and a complex marriage and a day job when are you going to write? I mean, you got to think about life building. Like that's what, to be honest, I, I don't, I'm not bitter, but grad school was such a farce for me. It's like, how do we not talk about that? Like we didn't talk about the things that happen as a writer. So, right. so um, yeah, building your life. I might've got off the initial question there on my rant, but uh yeah, that, that, oh, about writer's block. Oh, because theater. it makes sense. Cause you know, it's, it's one of those lessons where you, they, you know, probably historically didn't talk about like just solutions to what that or explore in the classroom, you know, for people that wanted to write, you know, yeah. this idea what writer's block is something we call writer's block, but maybe it's, that's just a manifestation of something else. I mean, it's worth exploring these things. They could be very useful. Right. I, I, I do think there is a fear without a doubt. And I, for me, I do think it's a fear of obviously of being exposed, of being ridiculed. But I think the most intense fear for real is, I do, I think it's a fear of feeling, feeling all the things you've got to feel. Well, for sure. That could definitely be. A lot of people don't, you know, they, they're looking at other aspects of writing. <laughs> yeah. Right, they're not really thinking about that. Which right. could be, you know, or you know what happens when something. It's like uh, I brought this up before. I, I did a had a this uh, group of actors uh, that are on a web series about a group therapy. But then I just said it's. But maybe I didn't even mention it in that particular one. But there's this other phenom- There is a phenomenon about in therapy where you get you get too close to something, and that's when a lot of people quit. Of course, you know it makes sense, right? It's like. It's too scary. Yeah. And I, it's funny. I think about that all the time. It's a huge part of my one-on-one consulting is what a, what a tragic thought to think of. I wonder how many scripts are out there. When you hear the story of these scripts, doing all the research I did, you think like how easily these scripts might not have been made. Mm-hmm. You no, know, or one draft you could have quit or someone talked someone in and keep going or, and yeah, I wonder how many, people were one draft away and quit you know use a football metaphor five yards from the end zone it's right. like because i gotta say i came an inch away from quitting this book i can't uh, i, I was sure on the floor in the dark just saying this is it i can't finish this there's no way right. it's it was too much work and too much of my soul in it like this is a bucket list type of thing for me oh sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. well again it's called 27 essential Principles of Story by Daniel Joshua Rubin, Brooklyn Zone. That's it. And uh, Chicago's uh, or Evanston's adopted son. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, and we're, uh, we'll put the website and uh, your Twitter and all that so people can connect with you and if they're interested in exploring, getting, getting uh, more information and to read the book. Okay. That's the idea. All right. Well, Thank you so much for having me. I'd love Anytime, to let's do it again. It's I would. Fun. That'd be great. And also, you know, I, I, I think it'd be so much fun if you ever wanted to do it. If there's ever a movie you want to, you know, break down, oh, I, we could do I, that. I love doing that. I love seeing the craft of great writers. It's just a. I got to get back to that. Get back That's to a it. Very cool idea. I would yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, 
I've got a bunch of favorites. That would be so awesome. And just seeing what did they do? How did they do it? Because, and I got to say, the more I watch, like I've watched Pulp Fiction 8 billion times. I got to admit, I'm a big, big Quentin guy. And at least the films of his that I like the best. And when you, I break down in the book, um, a scene from Pulp Fiction where John Travolta and where Uma Thurman accidentally ODs. And it's so good. And there's so many little tricks that happen in that. And when you watch it, I, I often test myself to see how many times can I watch a movie that I love? Like I, 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 my personal favorite is Break a Moran. I don't, you, just a great court. I haven't movie. seen that in a long time, but oh. I, I, of course it's. And there's so many little things you see, a little line that gets called back later, a little moment, a little visual thing. And so, yeah, I would love that anytime. Break a Moran. Let's do it. All right. Thank you so much for having me again. And, uh, Thank you. And all in your site. Glad I was able to uh, pull together myself uh, together. Yeah, I certainly hope you feel better and have a quick recovery. Mine, thank God, wasn't too bad. But, no, I think by tomorrow I'll be 100%. I, yeah, I think. I think so too. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Okay. Take care. Thank you.